So here we are. Uh, didn't get a lot done. This morning I got up and I was in a hurry. I had a lot of things to do. So I just took care of a couple things um, that I didn't get on video. Um, I just set the distributor in here. I made sure that it was lined up on top dead center right here. And yesterday when I was uh, putting in the push rods, I made sure that these two lifters were not moving. So that indicates that that's the number one cylinder. It's firing on that cylinder. So I left it there and to when I do my static uh, timing. So I just set it down in here to cover the hole basically. I got all the tape and everything off of it from when I painted it. I put the oil sending unit. There's a side piece here um, that bolts in another sensor, which is this one right here. I'm not sure why there's two of them. I don't know if one's, this one might be oil temperature and the other one might be oil pressure, I'm not sure. But anyway, <clears throat> I'll verify that. Uh, I put my pressure gauge on here, right here, and I put oil in it. And I'm using Lucas Oil engine break-in oil, 30 weight. Um, that has all the elements in it, all the um, chemicals in it that the engine needs to break in, especially the cam. That's the really important part. That's the crucial part when you first fire it up. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to pull this out and all I'm going to do is just um, put a, I have a drill adapter right here. This little guy right here is just like the um, distributor is on the end where it goes into the oil pump. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this device on here and we're going to get some some speed up for, I don't know, I think it'll probably take a couple minutes at least. And uh, we'll get this whole oil system primed. That way we'll get oil throughout the whole engine so when we start the engine, we're not starting it dry. And uh, that's basically what we're going to do, okay? Uh, stand by and we'll get it started. So this device uh, comes with a lot more attachment. It comes with a hood around here with a pin through it. I had to knock that pin out and take all this other stuff off because it's made for, a, I believe, a small block Chevy. But once you take the other stuff off, you can go ahead and put this as you want. If you want to use it for like a centering point, you can use it or you can not use it. There. All right. I'm in. So this oil pump rotates. That's important. The distributor rotates clockwise. So I want to make sure that this is rotating clockwise too, which it is. All right. All right. So I'm in here, I'm gonna run it. As I said, I'll probably feel it when the oil, there it is, at 40 pounds. So I'm gonna run it for a couple of minutes um, just to make sure the oil gets up to the, um, to the lifters and everything. I'm not, I'm not having to run it fast. Yep, I think that's good enough. All right. So there you go. That was it. I just wanted to prime it, get that over with, so I know that I have oil all up through here and everything's good with oil. And um, I've got pressure. I don't have a leak here. That's good. And uh, of course, I don't see leaks around here. I won't see any obvious leaks, at least. I don't see any obvious leaks. Um, what I'm going to do also, and I 
I'll wait a couple minutes and I'll recheck the oil level because I'm sure that the filter here filled up with oil. So that's it for right now. And um, I've got a lot of things I have to do today so I can't, uh, I can't do much more than this. I just want to get it covered up so nothing will get in there. I'm going to put a plug in there. And, uh, and that's, yeah, that's it. We're, uh, we're getting somewhere. It won't be long. We'll be firing this baby up. Uh, before I go, I'm going to go ahead and lock this distributor down or at least get it a little bit tightened down. So there's a mark here. I know that number one is right here, right where the corner of this is. So right now I have it pointing at number one. I had to use this. So I had to use this uh, to turn the oil pump to get it lined up just right so that when I put this in, it spins in, it locks in. It's on number one spark plug in the number one cylinder. So I've got that. Um, I'm going to wipe this off here. Alright. And I am going to put this in. Although I have oil up through there because it is riding on the cam, I am going to put a bit of assembly lube on the gear just to be on the safe side. When I took this off, it didn't have this gasket, but I looked in the uh, in the manual and it it indicates that you should have it. So. off a little bit there you go that's it fits right in so now it points at this corner like that it's locked in here on the bottom flush and worse when I adjust the timing I'll just loosen it and adjust this a little bit to get the timing just right but right there is uh, is where it's gonna be just a little add-on here um, you thought I was done but I wasn't Real quick, when I took out this thermostat, never mind this part right here, um, I did this because <clears throat> it was like rusted in there, hard to get out, so I had to punch it out. But um, this part right here, I just barely stuck a screwdriver in there to push out the thermostat, just barely touched this and it broke off. So this thing was pretty much shot. Um, so when you, when you change the motor, when you rebuild the motor, I should say, uh, be sure to change this thermostat. What we're going to do though, is I have a new thermostat and I want to test it to make sure it opens. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is uh, I've got a Pyrex here and I'm going to put boiling water in it. And I'm going to test to make sure the thermostat opens because I don't want to put a faulty thermostat in the uh, in the motor. It has happened. I've seen it. Got some boiling water. So I should just stick this thermostat in here. I see some bubbles. Yep, open right up. See that? <clears throat> see it's open right here. Now watch, uh, it'll close back up on its own. So I know this thermostat is good. as it cools off it'll close back up on its own I'll run this under some cold water there I ran it under some cold water real quick just a second and voila close back up again 
All right, so we know this thermostat is good. That's good. That's what I wanted to see. I'm going to now put the thermostat in the housing here. Get it down in there. I don't know if you can see it. Oh, a tight fit. New O-ring. This didn't come with an O-ring, um, so I had to get order an O-ring on eBay. Uh, this is the way it came, part number right here, 356537. This guy right here. The old O-ring was a little hard, um, so I'm just gonna put this O-ring in here. This is going to be fun. And all this O-ring does is just hold in, hold the thermostat in place. Okay. I'm going to go just making sure that that O-ring is recessed enough in there in that groove. I'm just gently pushing on it. It's in there. There it is. Yeah, I don't know if you can see it, but it's in there. What I did while everybody was away, I uh, I had to take this off. I didn't like the way I torqued the uh, or the way I tightened the rockers, so I went back, loosened them and did it again because I felt like I over tightened them um, I just turned them until they just barely wouldn't move and then went three quarters of a turn before I tightened them I think a little too tight also when I know what I noticed is that my button when I was at top dead center right here um, my button was pointing to the right cylinder when I put this cap on Plug number one was over here. The firing order was correct, but plug one was over here, and it was plugged in here. I went back and reviewed my original videos to make sure that I had labeled these cables correctly, which I did. So the firing order, like I said, was one, three, four, two. That is correct. But it was off by one. It, it was number one started here when number one should start here. Now, if this thing's turned way over here, I guess it wouldn't matter, but it wasn't. It was pretty much like it is right here. So I don't know, it was, could have been firing off quite a few degrees. <laughs> so anyway, I rearranged the spark plug wires to the correct configuration. And now I have number, you see the factory dot here on the, on the cap. This is number one. By the way, I ordered a new uh, distributor cap and button because this is pretty old. So uh, it should be here today. I'll change that. But the, yeah, I mean, I don't know how I ended up like that. I don't know. I don't even understand how it was running like that, but it was. All right, so what we're gonna do to now is we're gonna put on this thermostat housing today and see what else we get done today. We'll get thermostat housing maybe. Um, we'll get the manifold on it. I need to clean the manifold. And of course I'll put the fuel line on and uh, I'll put the this little retainer here for the fuel line which was disconnected i guess somebody had disconnected it before because it goes to the valve cover so i put that back on put the fuel line back on it's secure this is the this will go up to the carburetor all right 
So let's get uh, let's get hopping here. I clean this off. This is all good and clean right here. Uh, ready to, for a new gas. I'll put a little sealant on here. I don't know. There's different theories about this, but I'm just gonna put a thin coat. sealing on the threads just to uh, make sure this goes like this just tighten this down a little bit let it sit for a little bit and then torque it so we, we're good for now I'm going to torque it I'm going to wipe this off cover back off and I'm going to check the torque on the coupler. I had to go buy a different torque wrench to use a crow's foot. Um, I got it real tight but I don't trust myself so I want to make sure it's torqued correctly. All right so we got everything done here. Got uh, just that to do and I have to put on the impeller. And we'll be ready to fire this thing up. I skipped over um, some steps on video. Mainly because my videos weren't getting that many views. And I wanted to get this thing done. So, so I skipped over a lot. I skipped over the manifold, the riser, the all the things on the front, the alternator and the uh, power steering pump and everything. I made this block right here for the inlet hose because I'm going to hook up the hose to this right here, which comes with the boat, to run it. So I'll run it from here. And uh, it was just too hard to figure out an adapter. So it was better just to block this off like this and connect the hose right here where it was made to be connected to. All right, let's get this cover off, and I'll retorque this, and then we'll be done. And I gotta rearrange my uh, my wood here on the pallet. All right, I ordered these new coupler nuts. Um, they say they suggest you replace them every time you uh, take them off. Now, this is the way to do it. The new ones are 11 16 and I didn't have a 3 8 drive torque wrench and I was trying to do it with a half inch drive with a converter and it just didn't work. So what you got to do is uh, you use a 3 8 drive, a crow's foot and uh, torque it like this. It says uh, 50 to 55 foot pounds, I put 54 foot pounds. The torque, the crow's foot adds a little bit to it, so it's probably just just above 55, or at 55. But there you go, they're all torqued. So I feel better. When I retorqued them, they turned just a hair, I mean just a fraction. So, uh, so it was better that I went ahead and torqued them. I've heard all kinds of stories about the couplers vibrating loose. Alright, we'll get the cover back on it. Get it on the pallet and get it ready to fire up. <laughs> 